Greetings all humans and little cups. I am Mufasa, the wise king of the Pride Lands and a devoted father to my son, Simba. My paws have tread upon the warm golden sands of the savannah for many years. And my eyes have gazed upon the boundless horizon, watching the circle of life unfold before me. I come to you tonight, not in my fiery glory, but in the gentle embrace of a storyteller's voice, to share with you the whispers of the wind that shaped our world. Gather round, for this is the tale of how Simba, my son, took his place in the circle of life. As the African sun peaked over the horizon, the animals of the savanna gathered at Pride Rock to honor King Mufasa and Queen Sorapi's newborn lion cub, Simba. The proud parents had just welcomed the tiny cub to the great circle of life. Rafiki, a wise bamboo, presented the future king to the savannah. The animals cheered and stamped their feet in approval. Scar, my brother, didn't attend the ceremony. Scar had been next in line to rule until Simba was born. He wanted to get rid of the young cop so he could be king. Life's not fair, is it? Sky complained to a mouse he was about to eat. Just then, my advisor, Sasu, flew by. King Mufasa's on his way, he announced. I was not happy that Scar was absent from the celebration. Sarabi and I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba, said I, as my brother Scar should have been first to greet the cup. Scar shrugged and told me that he forgot, and then he walked back to his den. Don't turn your back on me, Scar, I said. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me, he warned, Scar warned. As time passed, Simba grew into a curious cup. I had promised to teach him about being king, so one morning, I took Simba to the top of Pride Rock. I said, Look, Simba, everything the light touches is our kingdom. But I caution my son never to go beyond the boundaries of the kingdom. Later that day, Simba visited his uncle's car. My dad showed me the whole kingdom. And I'm going to rule it all, he said excitedly. With an evil grin, Scar asked if I had shown Simba the elephant graveyard beyond the northern border. Only the bravest lions go there, he added. Scar knew Simba could resist the chance to prove his bravery. Come on, Simba told his best friend, Nala. I just heard about this great place. 
the cubs were eager to explore the graveyard. So they asked their mothers if they could go to the water hole. Their mothers agreed, but only if Sasu went with them. Once they were in the savannah, Simba and Nala ditched Sasu as they neared the graveyard. The friends laughed and pounced on each other before tumbling into a dark place filled with bones and elephant skulls. Dark mist covered the ground. Simba and Nala cautiously walked towards an enormous skull. We could get in big trouble, Nala whispered. Sasu, who had been searching for the cops, knew they were in terrible danger. As soon as he found them, three hyenas emerged from the shadows and backed them into a corner. We love to stick around for dinner, says Shinsi, the leader of the trio. Simba, Nala, and Sasu ran for it, but the hyenas caught Sasu, so Simba ran back to help them. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size, Simba said in his bravest voice. Without hesitation, the hyenas charged after Simba and Nala. The cups were no match for the hyenas. Just when it looked like they were done for, I, Mufasa, arrived and saved them. The frightened hyenas quickly ran away. Simba was in big trouble, but I, the king, didn't stay angry for long. We'll always be together, right? Asked Simba. Look at the stars, said I. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. Just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And so will I. Meanwhile, Scar was angry that the hyenas had failed to kill Simba. I particularly gift-wrapped those cups for you, he told them. But Scar had a new plan. Be prepared, he announced, for the death of the king. Why, is he sick? Asked the hyena named Bonsai. No fool, we're going to kill him. Simba too, he said. The next day, Scar brought Simba to a gorge where wildebeests were grazing nearby. Now you wait here. Your father has a marvelous surprise for you, he said. When Scar was safely away, the hyenas chased the wildebeests towards Simba. Then, Scar ran off to find me. Stampy in a gorge. Simba's down there, he said. Mufasa immediately hurried off to save his son. I managed to rescue Simba but the herd carried me further down the gorge. When I tried to climb out, the rocks crumbled beneath me. To my relief, I saw Scar above me. Brother, help me, I cried out. But Scar dug his claws into my paws. Long live the king, he whispered, before throwing me, his little brother, into the gorge. 
Once the stampede cleared, Simba found me, his father, lying lifeless at the base of a cliff. He definitely nudged my paw, but the great king did not stir. Then, Scarbeard, Simba, what have you done? It was an accident, says Simba. I, I didn't mean for it to happen. What am I gonna do? The poor cup was overwhelmed with grief. Run away, Simba. Scar instructed. Run the way and never return. You see, my little cup, I was enraged and filled with sorrow when Scar lied to Simba and blamed him for my death. It pained me deeply to see my son carrying the weight of guilt that he didn't deserve. I wished desperately to set the record straight and let Simba know the truth, that it was Scar's fault, not his, but I knew I couldn't intervene directly, so. I watched helplessly as my son suffered unjustly. Scar watched as Simba fled the only home he ever known. Once the cup was out of sight, Scar ordered the hyenas to kill him. They chased Simba through the gorge and up a steep cliff. Desperate to escape, Simba leaped into a thorny thicket below. The hyena skidded to a stop when they saw the thicket. He's as good as dead out there. They agree before returning to Pride Rock. Back at Pride Rock, Scar broke the news of my death. Sniveling between words, he explained that Simba's young life was cut short too. It is with a heavy heart that I assume the throne, he said before declaring he will rule alongside the hyenas. The hyenas hung their heads as King Scar ascended Pride Rock. Simba ran and ran until he couldn't run anymore. Exhausted, he fainted under the heat of the desert sun where a meerkat named Timon and a warthog named Pumba found him. The cheerful friends brought Simba home with him. When Simba woke up, he was still sad, but Timon and Pumba explained that when life gets them down, a certain phrase helps them feel better. Repeat, after me, said Timon before clearing his throat. Hakuna Matata. Simba didn't understand, so Pumba explained it means no worries. Simba liked this model and his new friend's carefree lifestyle, so he decided to stay with them. In the jungle. Years passed, and Simba grew into a strong young lion. He tried to forget about the past, but as he gazed into the night sky with Timon and Pumba one night, he couldn't help thinking of the great kings and everything that I his father 
had taught him. Simba sighed. He didn't know where he belonged in the great circle of life. One day, as Timon and Pumbaa strode through the jungle, a lioness attacked Pumbaa. The terrified war dog ran away, but got stuck under the tree root. Simba rushed to protect his friend. As Simba wrestled the lioness, she pinned him to the ground. Simba quickly realized it was his old friend, Nala. As the sun set, Simba showed Nala around the beautiful jungle. They were so happy to see each other again, but something was on Nala's mind. We've really needed you at home, she said. Under King Scar, the Pride Land had become barren and the animals were starving. I can't go back, he said. You wouldn't understand. That night, why so Rafiki found Simba alone and deep in thought. You're Mufasa's boy, he said. He's alive, and I'll show him to you. Curious, Simba followed Rafiki to the edge of a stream. As he looked into the water, his reflection changed shape and became the face of mine. Mufasa. You see, he lives in you, said the babu. My face then appeared in the clouds and began to speak. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are my son and the one true king. The clouds faded away, and Simba knew what he had to do. I'm going back, he told Rafiki, and immediately set off for Pride Rock. When Simba reached the kingdom, he couldn't believe his eyes. The once bountiful land was now dry and barren. Just then, Nala, Timon, and Pumba ran up behind him. Rafiki had told them that Simba had returned home, and they all wanted to help their friend reclaim the throne. At your service, my liege, said Pumba. While Simba searched for Scar, Timon and Pumba distracted the hyenas. Simba soon found the false king arguing with his mother, my wife, Sarapi. And when Simba saw Scar strike her, he let out an angry roar and launched at his uncle. Simba, I'm a little surprised to see you alive, said Scar, eyeing the hyenas. The choice is your Scar, says Simba. Either step down or fight. Simba wouldn't give up the throne that easily. So he backed Simba over the edge of Pride Rock, with his nephew dangling below. Scar whispered into Simba's ear, I killed Mufasa.
anger rush through Simba's body. With a mighty roar, he climbed over the edge and pinned Scar to the ground. Tell them the truth, he cried out. Fortunately, Scar admitted to the animals of the Pride Lands that it was he who had killed me. Victorious, Simba ordered Scar to leave the kingdom. But when Simba turned his back, Scar attacked him again. With a swipe of his powerful paw, Simba knocked his uncle over the edge, where a pack of hungry hyenas was waiting. Scar, my older brother, was never seen in the savannah again. Finally, Simba took his rightful place as king. All the animals rejoiced at his return, and under his rule, the Pride Lands once again flourished. Many months later, the animals of the savannah again made their way to the foot of Pride Rock. Rafiki presented the new princess, the daughter of King Simba and Queen Nala to the cheerful crowd below. Simba was so proud. He had finally found his place in the great circle of life. I think all of you for listening to this story. Your presence here today is a testament to the enduring spirit of the great circle of life. Now, as the star begins to twinkle in the night sky, it is time for young ones to rest their weary eyes and for the elders to share in the warmth of their wisdom. Remember, the stories of the Pride Lands are yours to cherish and pass down to those who come after you. So if you are enjoying this ASMR experience, let it be known. Show your appreciation by clicking that subscribe button and may the whispers of the savannah guide you to more tranquil nights. And for those who wish to share the warmth of this tale with others, click the like button. It is a small gesture that resonates through the fastness of the internet, reaching the hearts of those who may be far, but are never truly alone. Until then, my friends, may the great kings of the past watch over you, and may the whispers of the stars lull you to sleep.